no self-control, what is going to happen? Five minutes late or five minutes early, that's all. Even if you zoom or even if you go from 90 to 100, still you'll get stuck somewhere else. And in the process, because you don't have self-control, you hit someone or, or your BP goes high. That is one of the uh, reasons why your BP is high. You're not being gentle, you're being very tough, you're being very harsh. When you're being harsh, when you're angry, when you're out of control, obviously your blood pressure will increase. And when your blood pressure increases, then the doctor gives you the double dose of pills. And you take those pills, then you're more angry because the BP is more high, the medicine is reacting in a negative way. And you start losing control and you start all kinds of things. It has side effects. The medicines have side effects. So brothers and sisters, it is, it is all, the Holy Spirit is a gentle God. He helps you slowly. And he so happy you are watching the series on the Holy Spirit. Thank you for all your prayers for Grace TV. We have been experiencing the grace of God upon our lives. The Holy Spirit is stirring up your spirit uh, to know more and to long for uh, more of God and experience more of God. If you, if you are uh, so eager to learn, if you are wanting to spend time in prayer, if you are wanting to go to church, if you are wanting to listen to the word of God and worship and praise, that is seeking after the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is increasing your desire. You are thirsting for righteousness. That is the uh, one of the uh, fruit of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit helps you grow into maturity, grow into His grace, uh, grow in truth. That is what we are learning about. I'm so happy to hear a lot of people writing and a, lo a lot of people are calling up. Yes, I mean, a lot of people are not understanding uh, and, uh, you know, few people are like, oh, what is this Holy Spirit? You know, the, the Lord, I'm praying that the Lord would give them the revelation. The revelation will transform and change your life totally. Pray specifically, ask the Holy Spirit, uh, the word, use the word and say, Holy Spirit, I need the revelation of your word. Increase the revelation. Ask the Holy Spirit specifically every day and the Holy Spirit will give you so many tremendous revelations. If he has done that to me, he will do that to you. We've been looking into Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit, unselfish, unselfishness and joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things, there is no law at all. And uh, uh, this is from chapter 5, uh, verse 22 and 23. Now we are looking at verse 24. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh. Literally, it is talking here about crucifying the flesh. When your body, when your physical body is crucified, you cannot come out of the cross. Jesus was crucified on the cross. He could not come down. I mean, he was, he is God. He was God. He could have come. But I'm just talking. If someone is nailed to something, you cannot uh, get it out. So your flesh is crucified. Jesus crucified your sins, your flesh to the cross. Sinful nature together with its passions and appetites. Uh, we were talking in the, in the previous episode about eating pizzas, eating those extra cookies, the fast food. There is an appetite, brothers and sisters, for your sinful nature. There is an appetite. Appetite is literally for food, for sweets, but there is an appetite for evil nature, evil passions. There is an appetite 
to do wrong things, bad things, lustful things, adulterous things, demonic things. But once we know Jesus, our life, our physical life is crucified. Our flesh is crucified. Sinful natures are crucified. Those lustful passions, the the uh, pornographic videos, the sights, the lustful, the images, the photos and the videos, the bad, naked, ugly things that are available that keeps popping up into your computers, on your phones and your evil desires, the appetites. When you see that, you want to see it more. But that has been crucified on the cross. We have to realize that the temptations will come, the problems will come. We need to ask the Holy Spirit, self-control, Holy Spirit, please help me. You are there with me. I have that self-control in you, in me, in my heart, through you. Help me to get that self-control out and, and crucify these passions, these appetites. Verse 25, if we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character and moral courage and conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has empowered you. Empowered you with what? With all these fruit of the Holy Spirit. Everything, love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, everything. This, this is the empowerment, grace of God. We are saved by grace. Grace is simply, it is an empowerment from on high to be overcomers, to be successful, to be prosperous, to be healed, to be peaceful, joyful, to exercise self-control. These are all the powers we receive. The Holy Spirit has empowered us. Yes, that is what. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must walk. Every day is a walk by the Spirit. We must walk with the Spirit with personal integrity. You know the word integrity? Integrity means 100% of your life, you are blameless, you are spotless. Grace has enabled that. But many people take this grace of God and abuse it. No, brothers. Grace of God does not give you license to sin. Grace of God does not give you permission to do whatever you want. In fact, grace of God is an empowerment to be victorious, to rule and reign over sin, to be in integrity, every area of your life. That is the empowerment that you got from the Holy Spirit. Godly character. What is godly character? Exactly that's what we've been talking about. Moral courage. Moral courage. Where is the courage to be moral these days? Immorality has increased. Adulterous people have increased. Can you as a young person, when someone approaches you to be immoral before marriage, in the secret, in the back, in the places that nobody comes, in the dark, where is your moral courage? Can you, before your marriage, say, no, this is not correct. I will not grieve the Holy Spirit. I will keep my marriage bed pure. Do you have that moral courage? Yes, if you are a Christian, you have that. The Holy Spirit has empowered you with moral courage. My dear sisters, don't give in to the lies of the men. The men are very deceitful, very, very, uh, you know, try to seduce you, try to 
put you down and try to do things that are not right. If the Lord has asked you to marry that person, this moral courage has to be exercised by you, sister, brother, by you. If the Lord has asked you to marry this lady or this man, whoever the Lord has told you, you need to wait because patience is the gift, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Can you be morally courageous? Don't be immoral in your conduct. That is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Our conducts are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Verse 26, we must not become conceited, challenging or provoking one another, envying one another. Envy, jealousy these days. It is a very, very high time in the society. Jealousy because the neighbors are jealous of what you have. You are jealous of what your neighbors have. Jealousy does not come from God. Jealousy is the demonic presence, demonic power that is trying to destroy your life. Don't be jealous. You, you in fact have the Holy Spirit. By the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you are going to exercise the spirit of love, spirit of giving, spirit of encouragement, spirit of patience. That is what uh, we need to understand as the beloved of Jesus, as the children of Jesus. We have the right to stand strong in the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.17 talks about now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage and freedom. You are free indeed. You are free in Jesus. When the Holy Spirit comes, you, you are out of bondage. Before the Holy Spirit comes into your life, before you accept Jesus, you are in bondage. After the Holy Spirit comes, you are set free. Set free does not mean like I keep repeating myself about you, you can do anything, you know, you live in um, immoral life and all. I'm not entertaining that. That is not at all true. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom to rule and reign over the enemy, the lust of the flesh, the, the freedom to uh, do the things that the Lord has called you to do. Bondage, free from bondage. Nowadays, uh, the, the church puts so many rules, so many uh, problems, so many regulations on the congregation. Do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. There are so many, many rules and regulations and people are bound with so many bondages inside the church after they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You are free in Jesus. You are totally by the power of the Holy Spirit have been set free to lovingly obey the Lord Jesus. Get away from the bondages of the enemy. So the Spirit of God, when the Spirit of God comes, you have liberty. You are free to love the Lord, to worship the Lord. There is no rituals. There are, there are a lot of people, a lot of churches, they put so many conditions to please the Lord. If you want to please the Lord, then you have to do this. If you want the Lord to give you more power, then you do this. If you want to experience uh, the anointing, then you, uh, you know, buy this and uh, 
do this 20 times we keep getting these uh, whatsapp messages if you don't pass this message to 10 people it will have you will have an accident or it will bring bad news to you brothers and sisters that is what we are talking about the spirit of god does not put you in bondage the spirit of god liberates you in those kind of messages don't even entertain them they are from the devil the devil wants to keep you bound uh, god does not do that god doesn't break your legs god doesn't uh, put you through accidents god doesn't uh, uh, you know do things evil things the enemy puts in uh, us in the bondage so you have freedom in Christ. You are set free in Jesus. In the midst of trouble, you are free. 1 Corinthians 2, 10 to 13. For God has unveiled them and revealed them to us through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things diligently, even sounding and measuring the profound depths of God, the divine counsel and the things far beyond human understanding. For what person knows the thoughts and motives of a man except man's spirit within him? So also no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God so that we may know and understand the wonderful things freely given to us by God. Hallelujah. Verse 13. We also speak of these things not in words taught by human, supplied by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual thoughts with spiritual words for those being guided by the Holy Spirit. What profound truths that the Holy Spirit reveals, unveils in our lives. It is only through the Holy Spirit. There are so many things that are veiled. When you get this empowerment, when you get this power from on high, there are a lot of things revealed like Peter. Only Peter got the revelation unveiling was done that Jesus was Messiah. 11 of them did not get it. That unveiling will happen to you through the Holy Spirit. Freedom will come to you through the Holy Spirit. The Spirit searches all things diligently because your spirit, God's spirit is sealed together. The Lord's spirit helps your spirit to search things the profound deep things of god the divine things the counsel of god you will before you know the lord jesus your human understanding uh, cannot comprehend so that is why there are a lot of things the physical world and the spiritual world are both both different worlds the physical world did not exist in the beginning God existed. Supernatural spiritual world existed. God's kingdom, the heaven, God existed first. To understand the spiritual world, to understand a little bit of God, we need God's help because after the creation, after, uh, after the worldly creation, the second creation, the God existed from eternity to eternity. And to understand the earthly things, we need the profound wisdom from heaven, the revelation from heaven. That's what Peter had, the divine counsel, the things far beyond human understanding. A lot of Christians, when they have spent time in the presence of the Lord, the Lord gave so many truths, so many revelations of the world 
that are in, in this universe. People invented, a lot of Christians invented so many hundreds and thousands of inventions because the revelation of God has brought understanding of the things that are in their lives, in their brains, and they have invented a lot of things. So for a person, we don't know the thoughts and motives except me, nobody knows. Who can know the spirit of man? How do you know what I'm thinking? How do I know what you are thinking? I pray from here, you are watching in your homes, in your houses, wherever you are watching and the Lord prompts me about your spirit and I speak speak from here with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you may be thousands and hundreds and uh, thousands of miles far away wherever you are, but the Spirit of God knows your thoughts and He reveals it to me and uh, He speaks through this medium to your heart. That is the uh, searching of uh, the Spirit of God within in you which is in you, which is in me, the same spirit, the spirit of God lives in us. So brothers, no one knows the thoughts except God's spirit. And that spirit lives in us. That's where the operational uh, takes place in the supernatural world. We have received that spirit, not the spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit whom God understands uh, wonderful things freely given to us by God. We speak not by human thoughts, human wisdom. No, these are all the interpretation of spiritual thoughts with spiritual words because we are empowered from on high and we are guided by the Holy Spirit. That's what uh, verse 13 is talking about, guided by the Holy Spirit. So brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit has come down, empowered us, given us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He knows the thoughts that you are thinking, you may be quiet. He knows your thoughts, he knows my thoughts and he reveals it and he guides us. Those are the beautiful manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need the fruit of the Holy Spirit. These are all need to be learned. These are all need to be taught to us in our spirits. And the Holy Spirit will teach us when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. I pray that the Lord would give you revelation of this spiritual wisdom, spiritual knowledge, and that you would be led by the Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that our brothers and sisters that are watching, thirsting for your righteousness, thirsting for your guidance, uh, thirsting for your peace, thirsting for your love, help them, Lord, so that they would be guided by your Holy Spirit. And that revelation, knowledge, would flow in and through their lives. Peace to their homes, healing to their homes, Lord. Revelation be multiplied in the name and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brothers. May the revelation and peace and joy of the Holy Spirit multiply abundantly in your lives and through your lives. Grace and peace be multiplied to you.